welcome back to the channel to this massive comparison of two very very well known chronograph watches so let's just get straight into it and introduce the pieces on the left corner here i have this piece the breitling chronomat 44 gmt the model is ab 042011 full model numbers and links uh, below of course to let you check it out uh, i reviewed this not too long ago lots more details in the actual video review so do check it out if you want to hear all about this watch uh, so on the left here i have a breitling and then on the right none other than the very very well known very iconic omega moonwatch speedmaster professional chronograph uh, again model numbers below here because it is very long and all links uh, full details in the very long review that i did on this watch not so long ago again check that out if you want to hear all the details all the in-depth stuff about uh, these particular watches uh, this is just going to be a head-to-head -head comparison so these are so recognizable they both have 316l steel uh, they both have uh, screw in case backs that you can kind of quickly see there uh, tacky meter bezels right this one of course has uh, a lot more going for it that, that breitling has not just a tachymeter but 24 hour and whatnot uh, the omega has that famous tachymeter bezel they have steel bracelets right solid steel bracelets well-known ones that you can see there they're both mechanical chronograph movements this one's of course is an automatic this one is hand wound only uh, but in terms of similarities they do have that same tri compax layout so they have a small seconds or running seconds at nine o'clock they have a 12 hour totalizer at six o'clock and they have a 30 minute totalizer at three o'clock there okay so lots of similarities but you know this one is clearly a much more modern design all the creature comforts you can almost think of uh, this one on the other hand is a classic piece you know in some ways it is actually quite basic and it has remained much the same for 50 years for good reason as well because it is almost the same as it was when it first went to the moon msrp is quite a big difference uh, the one on the left the breitling is a smidgen over ten thousand so ten thousand and twenty usd is an msrp this one is five thousand two hundred and fifty so nearly half the price of the breitling okay so let's just get ahead into this comparison here so first up the caliber right the the movement of the watch. Breitling has manufacture B04, so in-house manufacture, uh, you know, they, they have started doing that since about 2009. It is 47 joules, so a very high joule count, 70 hour power reserve, again a very high power reserve, you know, higher than most movements that you, you know, you have in your watches, most movements I have in my watches. And the other things to say is that it is a column wheel chronograph with a vertical clutch. You know that little bit more difficult to make than a cam lever chronograph which is what the omega 1861 movement is it is a 18 joule movement so not a very high joule count 48 hour power reserve cam lever style chronograph um, you know whilst this is so well known right it has been updated since the original moon watch right but it is still flight certified by nasa uh, because this one is just so much more I have to give that a 10 versus the Omega 9. You know, this one you can argue maybe it's not even a true in-house because it originally it was a Lemania. Now that has been taken over by Breguet. Breguet is a Swatch brand, so maybe you can argue it's in-house, but it's not directly inside Omega. Right, 10 versus 9. Hopefully that's not too controversial for you guys. Right, case and bezel. Okay, so the Chronobat is just very, you know, that very solid, very robust uh, case design very you know well known that famous bezel with those you know that that compass point riders right that's kind of like an icon of the chronomat uh, design right a very very muscular yet elegant case right you know look at that design that that you know very lustrous polish um, that curves that they've given it despite this being a you know a very robust and muscular watch i have to give this 10 you know it is a great case design um, with the omega Right, this is of course absolutely iconic, right? You know, very, very well known. One of the most uh, well recognized watches in all the world. You know, very, very famous silhouette. Uh, that that bezel, that tachymeter bezel that has been 
so much copied you know again it's a 10 out of 10 right this bezel is also no slouch right very solid stainless steel you know just iconic in its own right i have to give this 10 out of 10 for both you know they are so so very good designs to have uh you know let me know if you feel differently but but that's how i feel about the both these case and bezel designs here okay then moving on dull and crystal okay why have I given the Chronomat 10? Well, you know, this this dial has just so many superlative details. I mean, just look at everything they've put in here. You know, so much work they've put in there. Uh, that very detailed chapter ring, uh, applied markers all around, including the Breitling symbol, uh, you know, the, the textures on the tri-compact dial, uh, the hands itself, you know, high polish that counterbalance Breitling and the central chronograph. And then on top of that, they've got that ring of the tachymeter, um, you know, the tachymeter flange, I suppose you might call that, not, not truly a bezel. There's so much in here, yet they have achieved, I think, a very nice balance to make it not look ridiculously busy. You know, it is a busy dial, but there's just such a, I, I think they've done this uh, a very, very good job here. So, you know, I've given 10 out of 10 for the dial of the Breitling there, you know. Uh, the crystal, yes, that's a sapphire with double anti-reflective coating. This one is the very well-loved Hasselite crystal, right, you know, with all the character that it gives you, including the fact that it doesn't tend to pick up fingerprints. It's fantastic, right? Uh, but that dial, you know, yes, it's so iconic, but it's actually quite basic. There is not a single applied marker on here. It is all printed. Right, that classic tricompax. There's some uh, uh, sunkenness to it, right? There is some uh, 3D uh, texture on this dial here, right? The the subdials are actually slightly sunken in, but I I I just don't feel this uh, can go up to the Breitling in terms of how much the Breitling has put into it, right? Plain, simple, straightforward, very very recognizable and very readable. But I'm gonna give this nine out of ten on this category here. All right. Very interesting, isn't it? Let's just move on. Bracelet. Okay. Uh, the Breitling Pilot is fantastic, right? There's so much work that goes into this, right? Five uh, links, well, five pieces per link, I should say, you know, very, very high polish. A lot of work goes into this. It's, of course, uh, screw links and then a very, very solid end link there. But I, I got to take marks off because despite the fact that this part is nice and polished and it's got the engravement there, the the actual clasp body is actually very weirdly poor you know this kind of like pressed metal type of appearance uh, as well as that keeper it, it I, it's just weird that they've chosen to go with this type of finishing on an otherwise fantastic watch yes it's got that Breitling logo that's been soldered on here but otherwise it, i don't know why this is like that you know the other thing is this is only a friction clasp right if you look at that it just clicks in and then you pull it out. There's no, press, you know, not even a push button release here. So I, I, I gotta take some marks out of that, uh, that you know, because they've chosen to do that. You know, Omega uh, is right, absolutely where it should be. I think you know it, it, this this finishing is, you know, really where they want it to be. Right, screw links, of course, solid end links, and then if you look at the class, right, nice and solid. Right, a bit of micro adjustment there, and. You know, push button release and I, I, you have to give a higher mark to Omega's bracelet I think um, so 9 out of 10 for that one 8 out of 10 for the Breitling as good as it is I gotta knock some marks off moving on then to quality guys right quality I can't separate it so the fit and finish are superb on both I have to say right no complaints whatsoever you know really the the surface transitions particularly on the Omega right there, there, there's some transition from brush uh, to polish surfaces, not not so much on the brightening. Really, the only brush surface is on the top surface of the bezel. Everything else is polished, uh, as is you know the want for brightening watches. Uh, so so there's no I guess the transition work as such. But in terms of how it fits together, how the watches feel in hand, the the quality of the finish, nine out of ten easily. You know maybe even ten out of ten I guess. But I've given nine out of ten for both because I, I really can't separate them in terms of the quality uh, and the feel in hand of how they actually look all right so 9 out of 10 for both on the quality stakes here right moving on then style okay the chronomat is boldness 
and sheer wrist presence, isn't it? I mean, you know, I just put on my wrist here and show you guys, right, the the, the massive size that it has. You know, it really just stands out and calls attention. It, it does have its own very well loved style. But um, you know, it, despite the fact that it's so good, right? I, I really really like this. I have to give the slight edge to the Amiga because it's just that much more classic. It, it it's almost like it's confident. It doesn't have to shout out that you know here I am. You know, look at me. It doesn't have to do that. It just it just knows what it is. People, uh, you know, when they look at this, if you're into watches, anybody who is into watches will know what this is. And it's just you know it it's just a quiet achiever. And then in terms of uh, the the I guess the facet of versatility, you know, definitely you can get that into more formal occasions than that that loud almost monstrous uh, a watch that the chronomat is right this one's also slightly smaller 42 versus 44 millimeters uh, so because it's also more versatile i'm going to give it a slight edge on the mark here um, so 10 out of 10 really for that omega uh, classic design that has been around for more than 50 years anything that's been around for that long well you know there's a reason for that that it keeps going 10 out of 10 versus 9 out of 10 here on the style right performance okay this is another interesting one, actually. So you know, uh, the the Breitling has really the complete suite of creature comforts, everything that you can think of. So to what what I mentioned uh, by that is seventy hours of power reserve, right? Far longer than a lot of watches that I have. Two hundred meters, you know, proper water resistance rating. It does have a date display there on the four thirty position. It also has a GMT function. Right, exactly the same chronograph function as the Amiga, but you know it's got the, the suites of features on top. It's also got the Sapphire Crystal. Uh, for most of us, Sapphire is going to be the way to go. You know, you, unless you really appreciate the finer points of the Herselite, um, you know, Sapphire really I, I think suits um, most of us. So you know, it's got all those things, and on top of that, it's also an automatic. Whereas this one is hand winding. It's 50 meter water uh, resistance. Uh, right, it doesn't have a date display you know Hesselite great I really enjoy this but it's really more an enthusiast thing right for the for the lay person for the general person I, I think probably consider getting the sapphire version of this exact same watch and, and you go so you get the display back if you go for the sapphire version so you know you got a little bit more there so performance wise uh, you know I, I think you know because of the water resistance because of date because of automatic and the power reserve I gotta give it to the brake link here 10 versus 9 Right, moving on. Durability. This one was tough, right? I, look, I think this is absolutely solid. I mean, there's so much material here, over 200 grams of watch, even after the links that I remove, right? It really does feel it can take a beating. Uh, it's got a very, very strong bracelet, right? Those links are muscular, right? They are, there's a lot of material there and you know, there's probably not many bracelets that are stronger than this and I, I would think that this is a damn size stronger uh, than the Omega bracelet uh, just the way it is constructed particularly the the rods that go through this bracelet is definitely bigger than the ones that go through here uh, but why do I feel I need to give a 10 out of 10 to Omega uh, it's because it stands apart right in the NASA testing uh, you know the vacuum test, the temperature, the shock. You know they they're kind of beating this with a hammer. Acceleration, everything that has gone through to pass and get flight certification, you can't ignore that. So because of that, I've given that a ten out of ten as well. You know, will the Breitling pass all those tests? I guess we won't know, but you know, I might put money on that. You know that Breitling would pass all those tests as well. So let me know particularly what you think about that you know uh, that's very interesting to score that I've chosen to give 10 out of 10 on both right nearly there guys value okay in this case you know Breitling is a very solid package I think you know it's got that near perfect caliber B04 in-house chronograph which you know has everything right it's got that high power reserve it's column wheel vertical clutch everything you almost want out of a chronograph movement right it's it's really or, you know it ticks all the wish lists but because it's double the price of the Amiga uh, and the Amiga right you know it comes with so much it comes with a huge accessory package this one doesn't come with any accessories really apart from a travel pouch um, this one comes with you know so much more you can check it out on the video review that I did 
uh, at about half the price, you know, you got to give the value to that to the Amiga. And uh, apart from the fact also that it is the Moonwatch, it is, it, it's just in the in the psyche of the horology community. Uh, you know, do you, if you had to pick which one's more famous, I think there's no doubt you have to pick the Amiga. So, because of all that, I think you have to give the value nod to the Amiga. I've given nine out of ten for the Amiga, eight out of ten for the Breitling at nearly double the price. Okay, last one guys, Bran. Okay, so Omega, I'm not gonna say any more about it. I think in terms of branding, right, top five of anybody's mind, I would think, uh, even if you pick random people from the street, uh, it's in the psyche of the world. Um, so 10 out of 10 as a brand for Omega. Uh, Breitling, I've given nine because, well, you know, it is very, very well known. It's probably in the top 10 of many people's, uh, I guess, random, list if you kind of just grab someone said name top 10 watches name 10 watch companies that's probably in many people's lists but whilst they are very strong name they are definitely a step or a half step behind Amiga you cannot give Breitling I think the same mark as Amiga that's my view anyway in my experience of reading about watches and then talking about watches so 9 out of 10 versus 10 out of 10 on the brand stakes here okay so guys what is the total it is so, so close, right? Just one point in it. Maybe it could have gone either way. So guys, in summary, you know, the Chronomat, an excellent, excellent offering, you know, category wins on this superb manufacturer in-house movement. One of the best tool dials around. I mean, just take a look at that. Um, it's got a full suite of performance and convenience features. And really it, it matches the Amiga toe-to-toe -to -toe on case design on overall quality and durability okay so that's that's why I got to say about that the Amiga you know I think it edges ahead uh, in the end with the better bracelet and I think that's not controversial it's got its classic good looks undeniably better value at about half the MSRP and of course it's got the brand strength so there you go guys my comparison of the Chronomat 44 GMT versus the Speedmaster Moonwatch let me know what you think hopefully you found this fascinating and interesting guys if you enjoyed my videos do consider subscribing new content weekly always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology thank you guys again for watching and as always i'll catch you next time